I'm going to talk about the IT industry. We talked about physics a little earlier. IT is probably an application of physics. People before me spoke about sports. People spoke about dance. People spoke about karate. You will do all three in the IT industry, but in different ways. You fight, you, you, you fight karate with the, with the disruption that you're seeing today. You play chess with the various technologies that you have and industry and the job makes you dance anyway. So that's where we are. So this is what we will probably uh, kind of, I put together that we will talk about today. I'll quickly talk about NASCOM. We're a not-for-profit organization working by and for the IT and the BPM industry. I'll give you a snapshot of what the industry is all about. Some of you may be associated, some of you may be not, some of you may want to associate with the industry going forward. We'll also talk about what the industry is doing today, the dynamics, the difficulties, the disruptions that we are all faced with. Of course, disruptions today is not a negative word. It's supposed to be looked with a positive connotation. Let's see what, where, and how of this disruption is for all of us. And of course, we will not believe in something just because somebody tells you so. We want the mathematics around it. We want those pointers, those market data points, to believe that there is a disruption and there's an opportunity for all of us. And last, we will look at the coolest thing that we are all wanting to do. Everybody wants to do a startup. So let look, let's look at the coolest thing that startups. The IT or the BPM industry is an industry which is purely built on talent, on skill. In a brick and mortar industry, in a manufacturing industry, it's those machines and raw material. Here, your machines are men, women who work for you, and the raw material is nothing but their brain power, their skill. So it's important to focus on this very important piece, which is called skill, skill building, reskilling, learning, and relearning all the time. And that's how this entire industry gets built. What does this IT BPM industry do? How does it impact all of us? There are some pointers that I want to talk about here. The industry is about $152 billion as we speak for the year 2018. It's growing at a pace of about 79%. But what is more important is the second point that you all see there. The second one that you see all see there, which is the digital technologies. The advanced technologies that are building today, the advanced technologies which are impacting the industry, and that piece itself contributes to about 20% of the industry, which is about $25 billion. And the, and the icing on the cake is that this particular piece is actually growing at a pace of about 30%, which means that as we speak, it's digital technology which is growing and growing by the day. What does this industry do? What does industry do to India? It contributes to about 24% of the overall exports, not small. And hence, this industry is here to stay and contribute significantly to the GDP of this country. Did anybody, did any parent encourage any of us to look at something on our own? Did any parent tell, go, go to a startup, I'll fund you, I'll give you the money, don't bother about a job, I'll take care of your needs, but go and try something new. No, this never happened, but in today's world, in India, this is happening, and that's the reason why today India is the third largest startup hub in the world, next to the US and the UK. <laughs> today in India, we have 5,200 plus startups, growing at a rapid rate of over 20%. And the best part is, if you really look at the way it's been growing, in the last one year, in the year 2017, we had over 1,000 startups who have started off in this country and are doing well. The most important point that I want to kind of stress here is that the startup ecosystem is here to stay, is here to grow, and will continue to do so. Now we've seen all this. We said we saw the market pointers. We saw where the industry is heading. Now let's understand where are we as an industry? Where are we heading as an industry? Very important to know. You see multiple challenges and forces that are acting upon us. You see five large forces are acting upon us there. Emerging markets are rising, as we said earlier. 
the globe is shrinking, the markets are rising, population is aging, geopolitical challenges are increasing. But one important thing, which is very important, is the rise of disruptive technologies, the rise and growth of newer and newer technologies, which is the largest impact that we are all facing as a technology industry today. Another probably parallel that I can give you today to a technological disruption is something like the chakra viha, which we have all heard of in the Mahabharata. It's coming like a chakra viha. It's coming and surrounding you from multiple directions across. It's coming like a circle around you. And one needs to be ready to come out of this challenge. One needs to be ready to come out of this challenge. And that's the reason why one needs to be agile all the time. And we will see how and why. First, the biggest change. The fundamentals of technology, which is the C, S, and C, the compute, the storage, and the connectivity. The three basic fundamentals of technology have become accessible to everybody. They have become cheaper. They have become less, less costlier. They have become more effective. They have become faster and accessible to everybody, anywhere, everywhere, all the time. Today, the power of the mobile that we all carry in our pockets, in our bags, is probably five or even 10 times more powerful than the computers that we all, some of us, used in the early stages of our career. That's the power of technology today. The second is data. Thanks to the CSC, the usage of CSC, there is a data explosion. Today, data is exploding like nothing else. Um, the explosion is not a nuclear fission, but it's data which is widely prevalent. And all of us, as consumers, as individuals, are adding to the data. And all this is not a challenge. Well, again, repeat that disruption here is an opportunity. How is the future? Is the future unclear? I believe yes. Not unclear in a negative sense, but unclear in the sense how, in what direction, and in what speed it will change. And hence, it's extremely important to be sensitive that this change is going to happen all the time, and we need to be ready for it. And that's where we are all in the brink of this fourth industrial revolution. Today, the entire physical space, the digital space, the biological space, entire thing is getting merged. It's getting coming together. And that's important. it's very important for us to recognize this fact and be ready for it. Now, how do we overcome this? We know that there is a technological disruption. We know there is data point to prove so. We have empirical evidence to say organizations who use this are successful. We know that we are impacted by a revolution. Now, what do we do with this? How do we handle this situation? It's important to recognize today that the entire world is changing. Today, organizations are not in need satisfaction mode. Your customer is not in the need satisfaction mode. He's become experience-centric. Today, customers are more demanding. There's a, there is a study which says that today, when you go to a customer, 57% of the cases, the customer has decided what to buy, where to buy, and whom to buy from. He is only ratifying you with you what he is doing. Whether he says yes or no to you as an individual or an organization, he's only ratifying his decision. But the decision is already made. So it's important to understand how do you use technology to be there at the right time and the right place and as early as possible. So use technology to do so. Today, it's not about being product-centric. Today, it's not about being giving a particular product or service to a customer, but creating that experience to the customer. So it's important when you build organizations, you look at these aspects of building the company. Today, it's no more about people. Is it about people? Yes, it is. But then, it's about people using technology. So it's about people being able to use the right technology in the right way and the right time. It's not about just people coming and delivering something that they have learned in the past. It's about being agile. It's about being able to deliver something that the current industry wants. And hence, what it means is about building talent with a higher digital capability. It's about the talent getting being able to upgrade oneself and coming up to speed on the latest technologies. 
So today, it's about organizations who are moving away from being followers, moving away from being just about doing what others did, but about being value creators or being innovators in their space. Had not Nokia thought about building a camera on the phone, Kodak would not have vanished. Had Ola not come out with this idea of building an app and you being able to hire a taxi or a car wherever you want, whenever you want, you would not be the way we are in in this world today. So I think these are all disruptions which have actually changed the brick and mortar infrastructure. Technology has changed this brick and mortar infrastructure. And hence, it's imperative to understand today that the only thing that works, the only one and only success story in the industry is skill, skill, and skill. Skill quotient, nothing can replace the skill quotient, and everybody needs to be ready for this. Now, how is the skill quotient impacting? Is it talent transformation? Talking about domain skills? Is it about technical skills? Is it about functional skills? No, it is about analytical skills. Is it a, it's about analytical orientation. It's about being able to understand how one can work in this global competitive world. It's about how one can be more creative, more innovative, and things like that. So it's not about the basic things that you learn in, in school, the basic things that you learn at college, but way beyond it, and how you can apply this knowledge in a more realistic fashion in today's world. And that's how we land with this digital ecosystem. We saw that the new age companies, I, it's sometimes I don't like to call startups as startups, but I call them as young companies because they're growing all the time, and hence it's not fair to call them startups. They're growing all the time. They are like a small child. So there are multiple domains in which this entire digital industry works, be it startups, be it e-commerce, the newest being digital payments and so on. But, the, but see the growth patterns there. I don't want to read out the numbers, but the, growth pat the numbers that you see there, the growth patterns that you see there, each of them is growing year on year. Startups are growing at 7%. E-commerce is growing even faster. Digital payments is probably growing the fastest. And so each of them has an opportunity for us in this disruptive world. Now what else is disrupting us? E-commerce, something called as advanced technologies. Advanced technologies has a large impact on our lives. Be it Internet of Things, be it machine learning, artificial intelligence, and the latest being CRISPR, which is more in the genetic engineering space. All of these are impacting us, augmented and virtual reality. Multiple, many of these applications are actually impacting us in many, many, many ways. Now tell me, now what's the India landscape here? The startup landscape in India, the, the entire startup story in India. We talked about India being the third largest in the world. No, there are some of these numbers are down. They're, going, they're not, not growing. Is it bad news? No, not really. If you really look at the second one, you say the number of startups are only 1,000 and they're growing, and they're down 29% from the previous year. In my view, that's good news, which only means that the fittest survive. So the good ones are surviving and the bad ones are not. So that's good news for all of us. Look at the number of talent that's being employed by these organizations, over a million being employed by them. We look at, now the next question will be Bangalore, Delhi, Bombay form the top three in India in, in the startup space. Where is Hyderabad? Hyderabad is number four. Hyderabad contributes to about 6% to the startup space in the country. Very important, the number of B2B startups that have been impacting business. Earlier, when you said startups, many people thought it was only e-commerce. Every, everybody could resonate only with uh, somebody like a, a Flipkart or a Amazon or an eBay, but today it's not so. Many startups are in the B2B space, and you can see that 40% of them are there in the B2B space, and that's a large piece. Number of organizations in the advanced technology space also are increasing. Very important, the mortality rate. The mortality rate is reducing, which means that again, good ones are surviving, the bad ones aren't. And very importantly, the, mortality, the, the number of B2B startups, the mortality rate of B2B startups is the number of failed B2B startups is actually reducing. That's also a good, good story for all of us. Now, how is the funding landscape? When everybody talks about startup, everybody wants to know, will I get funded? 
Where does the money come from? I'm startup. I need money. There is good news here too. The good news is the funding has gone up in the first in the first half of last year, and again, the average. Why? Well, I mean, it has gone down in the first half of last year. But very importantly, the good news is the per capita funding for startup has actually increased, which only means that people are not burning money for the sake of doing so, but are putting money in the right place. They're putting money in the right startup who's probably, who's going to, has the probability of higher success. The second is the amount of foreign investment is definitely going in the space, which, which is a good sign for all of us. Look at the kind of technologies that are there where funding is happening. All the advanced technologies are getting funded, which again is proof enough to say that if you are in the right space in the latest technologies in the digital world, you have your chances or the likely chances of success is far higher. Look at data analytics, workforce management, sales and marketing, SMB, and things like that. So what are they? Let's conclude to say what are those five main things that startups need to do? First, Embrace digital. Ensure that you are in the right space. At the right. Second, build an agile business platform. Build your pl an employee model which is agile. Don't stick to the old models. Look, don't look at only time-tested models. Today, maybe what you will do in today's world, in the new world, may actually become a time-tested model for somebody 20 years later. What else? Don't look at just service excellence. Look at building a product. Look at building a platform. Look at something that can be you can become a role model for. Very important. Build a scalable model. Build an IP. Build an IP, which is very, very important. It's not about delivering a service, but it's all about delivering something which is unique to you. Unique to you can be an IP, can be a talent, or could be even a GTM strategy that you want to build. And last but not the least, recognize that there's a huge potential in this country. Recognize there's a huge potential in the domestic market of India and start working on that. But what do you want to do? As a business, think through these very, very important questions as an individual. Are you easy to work with? Are you building the right business? Are you responsive to your customer? Or are you making the customer spin like this? Are you easy to contact? Are you easy to reach? Are you making promises which are reasonable, which you can live up to? Or do you share the blame, or just throw it back on the customer? Do you share information? Do you give the right information? Is your customer like this? Please think through. You don't want him to be this way. Or are you becoming a customer-oriented firm? Are you working for your customer or for yourself? Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a customer like this. Let him be happy. Let him say thumbs up for all of us. Thank you.